Hi everybody, Vigorous Rapscallion here, and today we're going to be doing a very quick tutorial on how to do distance grabbing so that your player doesn't have to be right up on the object. There you go. So, like, if they drop their gun or something, they can pick it up without having to bend over, but they can't pick stuff up that's, like, way across the map. It also keeps them from having to lean over, which is nice, because sometimes, like you can see here, the nav won't go all the way up, so sometimes you feel a little further away from the object than you'd like to be. This is going to be super easy to set up. Uh, we're going to be using mostly the stuff that comes out of the box in the Unreal VR setup. Uh, we're only going to have to change a few things, so let's get started. So, to start with, we're going to pull up our existing VR pawn. Let's get that blueprint open. And let's take a quick look at how it's handling grabbing right now. So here we go, input action grab left. So it looks like first thing it's doing is using this git grab component near motion controller function, which we're going to look at in a second. Uh, once it's figured out which object is the closest, it's going to do try grab over here. And then there's some logic here to keep you from, say, grabbing a, an object with both hands or accidentally grabbing multiple objects in one hand. Uh, we're not going to worry about that today. Let's just jump right into that first function. Great. So let's step through it really quick. We've got a sequence, so we're going to do this first. And we're going to be setting the local grip position based on the input of the motion controller. Uh, which is why they have two separate ones set up here. If you're wondering why they didn't use a switch statement as they do in other uh, functionality where you have to tell what controller you're dealing with, since you already have these input actions that are separate, this is a better workflow. Uh, let's go back to that git grab component. So it looks like what it's doing here to check for if there is an object close enough to grab and then check which object is the closest is doing a sphere, a sphere trace for objects and then finding the closest one to the center of the grip position. And there you go. And then it's going to return that when the sequence is done, the one and then zero. Once this has been set, the local nearest grab component, that's going to return and go through the rest of this logic here and go on to the try grab. So how do we change it so we can grab something that's far away? Uh, it's super easy, actually. So what this sphere trace for objects does, if you hover over it, it'll give you some info. Uh, it sweeps the sphere along the given line and returns the first hit encountered. Uh, only finds objects of the type specified. We don't need to worry about that. It's already set to the right thing. But right now, this isn't going down a line. It's just checking this radius because the start position and the end position are the same. So of course one way to fix this would be to just make this radius a lot bigger, a lot bigger than six uh, unreal units there, but then you're just going to grab whatever's closest to the hand. It might be behind you. We want some kind of vector so that the player knows what direction they are trying to grab in. Uh, so how are we going to get that? Let's go to our viewport for a second. And right now what we're grabbing, or the reference we have in this function is to the grip location from these controllers. Uh, that's what that's dealing with. Now we could get a vector from those, but that's going to be a little annoying because it doesn't really line up with the visual of the hand. Let's compare the two. You can see the hand there is pointing in a very different direction than this motion controller grip here. Uh, so how are we going to get a reference to the hand instead? Uh, the reason I like using the hand instead of just coming up with a vector from this that would make sense is uh, a lot of games, and it's a good functionality to have, will allow you to change the kind of angle of your hand if it doesn't feel quite right, if it feels like it's not matching up with where your hand is in real life. So if that setting gets changed, you don't have to change anything else. We're already getting the vector from it. Okay, so to get a reference to that hand into this function, first we're going to need another input into the function. And let's just go and call that hand. Probably should be more descriptive, but you know. Uh, then the type of object this is is going to be a B mannequin XR. That's what our skeletal mesh is there. Uh, you can't use skeletal mesh. It's got to be the specific type of mesh, mesh it is. So let's go back to our event graph. And we can see now, look at that. We've got this little hand input. 
So for both of these, we're going to grab the relevant hand for the right, hand right, plug that right in. Let's make that a little neater. There we go. And same thing up here, we're going to grab hand left and plug that right in. Now back to the viewport for a second, let's take another look at this hand. So uh, that is not our forward vector coming out of the top there. And that's fine, uh, you know, we, the only way to change that would be to re-import the model and that's not going to be a good option. So let's just work with what we have and it looks like that green vector there is going to be our right vector. So back here, we're going to grab our hand, we're going to, oops, get right vector. There we go, and let's make this a little neater too. Then, of course, if we just get the right vector, uh, that's going to be a value from 0 to 1 on each uh, x, y, and z parameter. So that's no good. We need to multiply it by something. Let's go ahead and multiply. And we want this to be a float. So let's make that a float double precision. And let's go ahead and promote it to a variable. And let's call this new variable grab distance. Uh, I messed around with it a little bit and I found that 100 feels pretty good, but then if you want to change it, uh, it's super easy to do. You just change that variable. Okay, then uh, if we just plug that in, uh, it's not really going to make sense uh, because this is a world location. So we're going to need to get this location and add it to this multiplier here. So let's go ahead and add. Boom, and that is our new end position. So 100 unreal units in front of our hand's right vector, which it's gonna feel like forward to the player, uh, is where this sphere radius trace is going to end. Let's try that out. Okay, let's see how this is working so far. Let's start with a snap component. Great, drop it, can still pick it up. Throw it far away, now you can't get it. And the only issue though, so they're not snap components, it's just going to set that location. It's going to parent the object first to the hand, then it's going to set the location to wherever the object was when that parenting occurred. So uh, that's no bueno, obviously, and there's a couple of ways you can deal with that. One is to just make it so that this function only works uh, for snap, uh, snap objects there. Or you could have it so that the rotation stays the same relative to the hand from where you picked it up, but the location is going to come to the center of the hand. Let's try that one. So next we're going to be working with this try grab component here. So this is actually a function in the grab component itself. It's not within the VR pawn. And let's take a look at what we're looking at. This all looks pretty simple. If it is a free grab component, then it's just going to attach parent to motion controller. And that's all fine. Uh, and if it's a snap component, what it's going to do is first set the rotation to how it should be and then set the world location. So let's just steal all this, duplicate it and move it up I should say, to here, and same deal. Awesome. Alright, let's try that out. So, as you can see, it still works the same for the snap. Those work great. And now for the cubes, those also go over to your hand, but the uh, rotation relative to the hand stays the same. So, if you pick it up like that, you get it in the same relative rotation. If you pick it up kind of at a 45 degree angle, it's still going to be the correct relative ro lo rotation. Excuse me. So, uh, let's say that you only want to have this functionality for snap objects instead. Say you like only want this for weapons and you don't necessarily want the player to be able to grab every object at a distance. That's going to be super easy to do. Let's set that up next. So the first thing we're going to want to do is get rid of all this. You know, we just put it there, but now it's going. So where do we want this to interrupt this function? Well, we don't want any of this to happen. First thing that's going to happen is it's going to stop simulating physics. So we want it to be before even that. So let's move all this up to give ourselves some room. And then all we really need to do is make sure 
that this free grab component is within the same distance as that grab radius. So to do that, we're going to need a reference to this motion controller here. Let's copy this one. We're going to want to get the distance, or sorry, get the world location. And then we're going to make a dupe of that get world location, which is going to default to target self. Remember, this is attached to the grab component, uh, so that's not going to give us a reference to our pawn at all. This is going to be to the object. Then we need the distance between the two, so pull off from that pin and type in distance of vector. Put that in, and then our return value there, we need to check if it's the same or less than our grab radius. Now, because this is a spherical radius, we actually don't want to use six for our distance. We're gonna to want to use half of that. So let's go ahead and grab the distance we've gotten and divide by two. Then we need to check if this is greater than six after it's been divided plug that into a condition to a branch up here. Now, if it is greater than six, we don't want anything to happen. So that true is going to be left blank. And if it is less than six, then false will trigger and we want the original functionality to happen. Uh, let's see how that works. Okay, so first let's make sure that our snap components still work. Those still work fine, can still grab at a distance. Nothing's changed there. But now, any grab component that is not set to snap, we can no longer grab it from a distance. Uh, let's make sure we can grab it at all, though. And sure enough, you can. It's back to its old functionality, where wherever you pick it up, that distance and rotation are both parented to the hand at the point at which you picked it up. That's great. So uh, these types of solutions are totally fine. There are plenty of published, professionally made games that, you know, use the same sort of system. You really don't need to get fancier with it. But say you do want to get fancier with it. Well, that's what we're going to go over in part two. We're going to set up something a bit more like the uh, gravity gloves from Half-Life Alex, where you can sort of pop things into your hand. We're going to look at a few variations of how to get the object from where it is to the player's hand, see how they feel and how they differ and how to set them all up. Uh, in addition to that, we're also going to show how to highlight what object you're currently pointed at. And that's great for if you have a bunch of small objects in a pretty close proximity and it's hard for the player to tell what they're about to pick up. It's just going to put a little highlighting, a little aura around that so the player knows what they're pointing at. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and I hope you tune in for part two. As always, have a great day.